Hi, my name is Rebecca Reed and I'm the Outreach Manager at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can attract butterflies to your garden. There are a few things we need to know first about butterflies before we can talk about exactly how to attract them. The most important thing you want to know is their life cycle. Have you ever seen a baby butterfly? If you've seen a caterpillar, you have. Butterflies go through complete metamorphosis. They go through four different stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Butterfly eggs are really small and they can be round, oval, or cylindrical. One really cool thing is that in some of those eggs, they're clear and you can actually see the baby caterpillar moving around inside prior to it hatching. And they're usually laid on plants, lots of times on the underside of those leaves. The second life stage is the caterpillar. It's the larval stage. When they hatch, they're very, very tiny and they immediately start to eat. And they'll usually eat that leaf that their eggs laid on first. Sometimes they'll even eat the egg itself. When they have one job to do, and that really is all they do is eat. Um, they need to grow a lot. Each species will only eat certain plants. And as caterpillars grow, its exoskeleton doesn't grow. So it'll shed its skin. So we call that molting. The skin splits and it kind of walks, wiggles out of that skin. And the caterpillars do that several times as they grow. Once caterpillars done growing, it begins the third stage of metamorphosis, the pupa stage. And in butterflies, we call this a chrysalis. And it may look like the butterfly's resting when it's inside its chrysalis, but actually there's lots of changes happening. The butterfly has to change completely into a caterpillar, so it needs to form those wings and change its body shape and all of that. And that during that metamorphosis, that's when that caterpillar, it turns right into a butterfly. Now, when it's complete inside that chrysalis, the fully formed butterfly will emerge. And if you've been lucky enough to ever see a butterfly at close, you'll notice they look kind of funky when they first come out. Um, lots of times their bodies are really fat and their wings seem kind of small and shriveled and they're um, kind of crinkly. And they, they do that because they have to cram that whole, all those wings into that chrysalis. And as they, um, after they come out, they'll sit and you'll see they'll start to pump their wings and they'll push the, all that extra fluid that's in their extra fat body out into their wings. Their wings will fully expand and they'll harden. Um, and once they're ready to do that, then they're ready to fly and they'll start the life cycle over again. Now that we know more about butterflies, we can start to think about what, how to attract them to our garden. And really what you need to think about is what they need to survive. So most people have a really easy time thinking about what adult butterflies need. But if you want to successfully attract a lot of butterflies, you're going to want to think about all the different life cycles of the butterfly. So the first thing to consider is what kind of host plants a caterpillar needs. Adult butterflies are always looking for that perfect host plant to lay their eggs on. If your garden has lots of these plants, the butterflies will be attracted there just because they'll want to lay their eggs. A good way to find out that information is to look it up and figure out what kind of butterflies you specifically are interested in having in your garden, and then backtracking and finding the host plants for those butterflies and planting those. Some really common and easy to grow host plants here are passion flower vine, milkweed, and fennel. It's important to remember that since you're planting these for the caterpillars, you can't treat them with pesticides and you need to expect some damage because those hungry caterpillars eat a lot. And that's just part of gardening with wildlife and for butterflies. The second thing you can do to attract butterflies is to plant a collection of nectar plants. The adult butterflies need lots of nectar to get their energy. And so there's lots of plants that meet this need. And once again, it's a great idea to research the butterflies you're interested in and specifically see what kind of plants they need to survive. Some really good choices that are easy to grow are salvias, asters, and vitex, and zinnias. And if you want to uh, plant out your plants, you want to you want to kind of plant it out so you have something that blooms early in the spring because butterflies need energy then all the way through to the fall. Um, so in Texas, in our part of Texas, you'll see butterflies coming through even into October, sometimes even into November. So you'll want to take that into account when planning out your garden. Butterflies also need shelter at night. They'll use the undersides of leaves, tall grasses, and cracks in um, trees and rocks. They'll protect themselves from storms and high winds in these places also. So if you look around your garden, you'll probably see you have some of them already. But if you feel like you're lacking, they do have commercial butterfly houses that you can buy, and that will also be a great place for butterflies to find protection. The final thing you can do is you can attract butterflies is to create a place for them to puddle. People don't often think of this, but butterflies actually do need water. And a way they get that is they'll puddle. That's what they call it. They sit in sand or wet mud and they drink that water and extract the minerals from the, from the damp puddles. 
Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a simple puddler for your garden. First, you're gonna need a shallow saucer or dish that's at least 18 inches wide, enough sand or coarse soil to fill it, a little bit of compost if you wanna add that in, if you have it available, and a few small rocks. First, you need to decide where you wanna put your puddler. Ideally, you wanna put it near your butterfly plants, but you also wanna put it somewhere you can watch it. It can be placed directly on the ground or up on a stand. Either way will work. Next, you wanna fill your container up with sand. And you can mix the compost in if you want. That adds a little bit of extra minerals. Remember, whatever media you use needs to be free of pesticides and herbicides because they're not good for butterflies. Next, you're gonna place the small rocks on top. They, have, they are a place for butterflies to rest. Then you wanna add enough water to dampen the sand, but not so much to make it kind of like a pond. They just want damp sand. Um, you also wanna make sure that you check it regularly to make sure it stays damp. You may find in your garden that you don't need to ever add water. You may need to add water on a regular basis. Now your puddler's complete. Remember, it may take a while for the butterflies to discover it, but just be patient. They'll eventually arrive. Thank you for joining me today to learn about butterflies and how to attract them to your garden. If you have any other questions or ideas for future videos, please email us at questions at fwmsh.org. See you next time!